Now ask him for an encounter tonight. Lord, let it be my miracle service tonight. Not just a miracle service, my miracle service. Give me an encounter, even by your spirit. Give me an encounter, even by your spirit. For in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. I welcome you in the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God. There are things that only God can do. There are things that men cannot do. He says, it is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And so we thank God for the marvelous testimonies and all that God is doing in this house. And he will yet surprise us tonight in the name of Jesus. God bless everyone, especially those connecting by way of television and those connecting online. The Lord bless you wherever you are located. You can be sure of this, that God will visit you right where you are. In Jesus' name. I'd like you to please help me honor a very dear and wonderful woman of God, Pastor Mrs. Bimbo Ekweme. Rogic, let's give her a big, big koinonia welcome. God bless you, ma. Such an honor to have you around. Thank you. Hallelujah. And then I'd like you to please help me honor a very dear, wonderful, and great man of God, Pastor Godwin, from his, his treasure house, Abuja. Thank you. It was a pleasant surprise having him around. Thank you. Thank you. My turn is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Nigerian ambassador to Australia, Ambassador Anderson, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to have you around. Hallelujah. Pastor Sam Dogara, House on the Rock, Gombe. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And um, if I did not mention your name, I honor you sincerely. I know that there are people inside and outside. Um, the Lord bless you and he will do us good tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tonight my heart is indicting a good matter, yea, I speak of excellent things. It says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. God will use it to rewrite someone's destiny tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you what makes a declaration powerful. It's not the linguistic prowess of the speaker. Mm -mm. It's that behind the speakings, there is such tremendous power from the throne that backs it. I prophesied as I was commanded and he said there was a sound. I prophesied as I was commanded. If you prophesy as you wish, there is no guarantee that there will be a sound. But if it is as commanded, there will be a sound. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So thank you so very much. Let me also appreciate everyone for making yesterday um, a very beautiful experience for me. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. You have brought joy to my heart. Joy will never depart from you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the prayers. All of the ministries who prayed vigils upon vigils fasting programs praying for me thank you so very much the lord will honor you 
in Jesus' name. But for tonight, I've not come here as a celebrant. I've come here as one anointed by God to ensure that everything that does not name the name of Christ, that it must depart from your life tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God of vengeance has won my battle. God of miracles has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. He has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. He has won my battle God of vengeance. I'm a winner man. He has won my battles for me. For someone after this service tonight, you will have to tap yourself to want to ask whether you are dreaming or you are awake. Because what my God will do in your life will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, can I tell you something? It is sin to attempt to minister a dimension beyond the level of grace given to you. The Bible says that when we minister, we minister according. That means before you speak, you vet the level of grace given to you. Can it bring this to pass or are you just deceiving people? I decree and declare again. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, that which will make you wonder tonight, may it be done in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. Just four things I want to tell us. And then we will pray and allow God to visit us tonight. I plead that we pay attention to the word. Because remember, I have taught you that the power of God has no ministry until the word of God comes to the scene. The power of God has no assignment whatsoever except to confirm the word. So if the word is not sent, the power of God has no ministry. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. There is a woman here, you came here particularly for your children. It is not even for yourself. You came here because you have been crying over your children. You are outside. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, that this is the meeting that will turn the life of your children around. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That this is the meeting that will turn your life around. The Lord is showing me someone. I, I think you are holding an aid or so. It's like you cannot walk well with it. You came here with that aid. I don't know where you are. Lift it and begin to walk. I don't know where that person is. Wherever you are, whether you are inside, whether you are outside, whether you are online, lift it. Lift it. Come. Take it easy with her. Let her not fall. I rebuke that spirit and I cause it to leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, be delivered right now. Please don't force her, don't push her. But this, well, this might be someone here, but the person I'm seeing is like the person is outside. But in the name of Jesus, doesn't matter who I decree and declare your, your healing right now. I saw the person standing from that uh, whatever aid. Let it be so. Walk. 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 Sheba la cosa de brande de dia. Wherefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. I like you to turn this miracle into one prayer. Lord, visit me tonight. Let me not go back the way I came. Someone is praying. Please pray. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. 
Shaladabagate barakoska de brendege balatusia. The Lord in the midst of his people is mighty. Give me an encounter. 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 Please take it seriously. This is part of the service already. Lord, give me an encounter. I did not come to go back the way I came. Following online pray, give me an encounter. Give me a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Don't be like Mary. Mary asked a question and said, How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? That may be someone's question tonight. I know God can do it, but how shall these things be? God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my God. Hold me closely to His eyes. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. Make a way. Way. He walks in ways we cannot he see. He will, he will make a way. He will be my God. He will be my God. Hold me closely. Hold me closely we love and strength. strength. For each new For day, new day. He, will he will make a way. He will make a way. Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so you do not know the ways of God. He's mighty enough to use anything to bless you. He's mighty enough to use any strategy to bless you. May that be so for you. Listen, please hear me. Let your faith be alive. Don't come wondering, will God touch me? Don't come wondering, will God heal me? God is not a herbalist. God is not a magician. He is God all by himself. He was not created. He was not supported. Are we together? So let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light oh. let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light i'll sing it one more time let hope rise let hope Hallelujah. The first point I want you to note tonight as we prepare to see the God of wonders is that God's love is unconditional, but walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Number one, God's love for you, God's love for me is unconditional. But walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Very simple point, but very powerful. 
God does not need you to become. God does not need you to believe. God does not even need you to love him to love you. It is his nature. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And with my loving kindness, I have drawn you. God is love. The Bible does not say he has love. The Bible does not just say he shows love. He is love. However, walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Because there are many believers who confuse the love character of God to mean that just because he's love, he should be too loving to leave me in this situation. He should be too loving to not step in over my life. Now you are learning that his love is unconditional. Nothing must be done on your own part to secure his love for you. But when it has to do with walking in the reality of his promises, there are conditions. Number two. The second point tonight. No amount of prayers... No amount of confession, no amount of spiritual activities, not even impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience. Point number two, no amount of prayers, no amount of confession, no amount of spiritual activities and even impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience. That means you cannot substitute obedience with prayers. You cannot substitute obedience with confession. You cannot substitute obedience with spiritual activities. You cannot substitute obedience even with impartation. Obedience is that powerful and is that much of a requirement as far as you are actualizing God's promises is concerned. There are many believers who perpetually walk in disobedience to the principles of scripture. But they pray while in disobedience. They confess while in disobedience. They carry out spiritual activities while in disobedience. They even receive impartation while in disobedience. None of these spiritual activities as profitable as they are will ever replace the place of obedience. Is someone learning? This is very powerful. So while you pray, while you confess scripture, while you engage in spiritual activities, while you submit yourself to receive impartation, you must be sure that your heart is determined to obtain grace from God to walk in complete obedience. He says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, if and when your obedience is entire or complete. Don't forget what we are discussing. A quick recap. Point number one, that God's love for you is unconditional. But walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Point number two, that no amount of prayers, no amount of confession, no amount of spiritual activities, no amount of impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience. Point number three, God's power, God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed. God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed. This is very important. God's power will usually, I will not write the word always, and there is a reason for that. Because a dead man, for instance, does not operate by his personal faith to come back to life. But God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed. Matthew 14 and verse 28. Peter was standing in the boat and looking at Jesus 
And he answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And verse 29, the Bible says, he said to him, come. And when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. The possibilities that you command is based on your attentiveness and your faith in Jesus. He walked to Jesus. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. In John chapter 2 and verse 5, the wedding in Cana. John chapter 2 and verse 5, the wine finished. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Not argue it. Not explain it. Not complain about it. He said, whatsoever he, just verify that he's the one saying it. And do it. Your miracle is connected to his voice, his instructions, and your obedience. Is someone learning? In Acts chapter 3 and verse 16, when the man at Gates Beautiful was healed and they were making defense of the miracle before the council, he said, and his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong, whom ye see and know. He said, yeah, the faith which is by him had given this man perfect soundness. In the presence of you all, faith in his name. You can have faith in your problem. It does not heal. It does not change anything. You can have faith in the devil. Absolutely. It does not bring you any solution. Faith must be in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Is someone learning? In Hebrews chapter 4, Apostle Paul was teaching us something very powerful. Let's begin from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1. Still talking about faith and obedience. It says, let us therefore fear. Listen carefully. Lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Let's read verse 2 together. Ready? 1, 2, read. Verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it so hearing it is not all there is to faith 116 that talks about you know all things even by him were all things created that were in heaven and that on earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers they were created by him and for him and we know that the word of god does not fail the bible says heaven and earth will pass away but that the word of god endures forever yet when that word became a man and walked upon the earth there were certain things he could not do even though the bible says the word of god should not fail Yet when the word was personified in a man, he failed many times. He went to a certain city and could not get certain things done. So what was wrong? That word that created everything without failure now was embodied in a man. And he went to certain places and certain miracles could not happen. And scripture had to give us that explanation. He said he marveled at their unbelief. Not he marveled at the limitation of his power. He marveled at their unbelief. That means as powerful as the word is, your unbelief can render it null and void. The power of God will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver. And I've taught you here the dynamics of faith is twofold. You must have faith in Jesus and you must have faith in the vessel that he's using. If you have faith in Jesus alone, you will still not receive. Are we together? When Peter and John saw the man at the beautiful, they didn't tell him, look on Jesus. They said, look on us. We are the, the, it is going to come from Jesus. But now that the power is already on earth, 
He's done his own part. Look on us. You want to be healed? Pay attention to us and listen to what we're telling you. He says, such as I have, I have because I was given, but I have it. Are, are you listening to this now? So, when it has to do with acknowledging the sovereignty of Christ, we worship him and honor him alone. But when it has to be, do with the dynamics of the transmission of his power from the throne to the final recipient, it is not only God you need. You need God and a yielded vessel. So you need faith in Jesus and you need faith in the vessel that you will use. He says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Then he says to believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Point number four. This is where I want to dwell a bit and then we'll pray. Please lend me your attention. The fourth point. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Write it. Don't put a full stop. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Therefore, you must contend for rest in every area of your life. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Therefore, you must contend for rest in every area of your life. You know what that means? You must be willing to take personal responsibility and insist until there is rest round about. This is why we came. So please listen very carefully. I've said four things. That number one, the love of God towards you is unconditional. But that walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Did we get that? Number two, that no spiritual activity sustains the power to replace obedience. Number three, that the power of God is available, but it will usually require faith on the part of the recipients to be made manifest. And then number four, that rest round about is God's desire. So we are not in confusion as to God's will and desire when it comes to our wholesome rest. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Therefore, you must contend for rest in every area of your life. A few scriptures. Exodus 33 and verse 14. These scriptures prove that it is God's desire to give us rest. He says, my presence shall go with you, speaking to Moses, and I will give you more than favor. I will give you more than progress. I will give you more than wisdom. I will give you more than victory. He says, I will give you rest. Are we together? Yeah. In physics, when you define rest, scientifically it means two things number one that there is no opposing force that is greater than the weight of that body pushing it to go to the left or right you say that body is in a state of rest am i right or that the force that is being applied is equal to the force that is opposing and so the body is in a state of rest that is truly the definition of rest in order to attain rest, it means something has to be done to all the forces that sustain the power to push you like a pendulum to the left and to the right. It says, my presence will go with you as a defense and I will give you rest. Say amen. amen. In Isaiah chapter 14, we'll read from verse 3 down to 7. Please pay attention. Isaiah 14, 3 to 7. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Notice the things that God wants to give you rest. Please go back to verse 3. It says rest from your sorrow, 
rest from your fear and from a hard bondage. Verse 4. It says that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How had the oppressor seized and the golden city seized? Reading to 7. It says, The Lord had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Verse 6. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and non-hindering. That means it's his own turn to receive a recompense. And then it says the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. May God give you rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God give you rest. In 1 Kings chapter 8, 1 Kings chapter 8, we'll read from 54. 1 Kings 8 from verse 54. The Bible says, and it was so that when Solomon had made an end of the praying, of praying all his prayer and supplication unto the Lord, that he arose from before the altar of the Lord and kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. Next verse. He says he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, "Uh huh, Blessed be the Lord that had given rest unto his people Israel. According to all that he promised, there had not failed one word of his good promise, which he had promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. We are reading to 56. Is that 56? Yeah, so we'll, we'll just stop there. Everybody say rest. Let me give you one more scripture I wrote down here. Matthew 11 and verse 28. Jesus himself is speaking now. 11, 28, Matthew. Come unto me. Someone needs to answer this call today. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you Rest is the name given to every condition that ensures you are free of any opposing force. Rest. It is the responsibility. Now please listen. Especially for men and women of God who may be following. It is the responsibility of every shepherd to walk with the Spirit of God in bringing God's people into their rest in experience. It is the responsibility of every shepherd to work with the Spirit of God in bringing God's people into their rest in experience. Please give us Ezekiel 34. While studying and preparing for this miracle service, I read this scripture and a new light came as though I had never read it before. 34 from verse 1. Please be patient as I read. You can feel free to say amen, but just be patient. In fact, say it in your heart. If not, you will, you will disturb me. But you need to listen to this very properly. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Go ahead, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds in Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God or unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel, that do feed themselves and not the shepherds and not the should not the shepherds feed the flocks is a question verse 2 ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool ye kill them that are fed but ye feed not the flock the diseased have ye not strengthened neither have ye healed that which was sick Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. No restoration. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty, you have ruled them. Next verse. It says, and they were scattered because there, was, there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. When they were scattered. Next verse. My sheep wandered through all the mountains. 
and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 8. Say, long reading, be patient. As I live, saith the Lord, surely, because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves, and not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. Can you see that it's possible for God to be against a man of God? Literally. And I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Next verse. When I read this verse, I prayed for myself seriously. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Twelve. As the shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so I will seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. Be patient, we are going somewhere. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. He says, there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. Next verse. That is how God is determined to give his sheep rest. I will feed my flock, he says, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord. Uh-huh. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. I will bind up that which was broken and strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, first saith the Lord, Behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle, and between rams and the he goats. Next verse. He said, Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures. He says, And to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must. Ye must foul the residue with your feet. Next verse. It says, as for my flock, hallelujah, that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Look at, look at what he's saying. Therefore thus saith, that's verse, go to verse 20. Therefore thus saith the Lord, God unto them, behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and the lean cattle. Therefore, because ye have trust with side and with shoulder, and push all the diseased with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. He is describing for you the state of the sheep that has made him to say, shepherd or no shepherd, I am coming to make sure I rescue my sheep. Be patient, we are almost there. Therefore, I will save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. I will judge between cattle and cattle. 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. 24. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. We are reading to 30. I think 30 or 31 is the last verse. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. 
And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. And there shall be showers of blessings. Next verse. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke. And delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. 28. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. Neither shall the beasts of the land devour them. But they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid. 29. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. Verse 30. Listen to this. Read verse 30 together. Are you ready? One to go. Thus shall they be known that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord. That by doing all of these things, I will prove to you that you are my people. I will prove to you that I have brought you into a state of rest, defeating your enemies, making the rain to come, and so on and so forth. Very, very, very powerful scripture. The last verse, and then we're done. 31. It says, And ye my flock, and the flock of my pastures, amen. So he's not talking about animals in the wilderness. He's saying all this flock I've been talking about, you are men and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Tonight, everything that must happen according to this scripture to give you rest, you will find it in the name of Jesus. Now please listen very carefully. I wrote here, why do we keep releasing our faith to contend for all round rest? Why do we keep organizing miracle services after miracle services? Three scriptures. Number one, Micah 2.10. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted and shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. The first reason why we keep contending is because where we are, is not yet our rest. He said, arise ye and depart. For where you are, financially, spiritually, is not your rest. That means we will keep organizing as many miracle services, as many, mini, as many ministrations, as many teaching sessions, until you get to your rest. He said, arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 9. Hebrews 4 and 9. 4 and 9. Therefore, it says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he hath also ceased from his own works, as God did from his. The charge is in verse 11. He says, Let us labor therefore. Let us what? Not let us assume. Not let us fold our hands and wait for rest to come and meet us. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Let us labor therefore. And the Bible gives us the various ways that the believer labors. It says, honor the elders who labor in word and in doctrine. So we labor in word, the ministry of the word. Remember? Acts chapter 2 from verse 42. The Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship, number 2, and in breaking of bread, number 3, and in prayers. This is how we labor. And then Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. It says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. This is how we labor to enter our rest. 
In Isaiah chapter 62, Isaiah chapter 62, from verse 6 to 10, 62 from verse 6, or we'll just do 6 to 8. It says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, he says, 7. And give him no rest till he establish. And 18, when you read from verse 2, Jesus himself is giving a parable. And he spoke about this woman who had no physical support system. That in a city there was a judge which did not fear God nor regard man. Verse 3, it says there was in that same city a widow. And she came to him and said, avenge me mine adversary. For, but for a while he would not. Afterwards, he told himself, he said, Though I fear not God, nor regard man. Verse 5, that's the key. He said, Yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, some versions will say her importunity, she weary me. 6. Verse 6, he says, And hear what the Lord says to, about the unjust judge. 7. It says, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he dare long with them. I'm showing you scriptures that justify your persistently pushing. That is your labor dimension. So that you don't say, I came for miracle service in January. I dropped my request. I have not seen it happen. Write it again. It is not unbelief. That is the labor dimension of faith. The Bible says, give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem as a praise. Are we together? The widow was defenseless and she went to the judge and she said, avenge me my adversary. I'm sure he would say, okay, that's all right. Um, come back again. And she kept coming and the man said, although I do not fear God and I did not regard man. He said, however, this woman by her continuous coming... It is Jesus himself giving this. So let me tell you, you will pray today over what you prayed for before. That has not yet happened. It is not unbelief. It is a labor dimension. You are coming because you trust him. Father, thank you. You gave me a word that my children, I will eat from my children in my lifetime. It has not yet happened, but I thank you. Because I'm in an atmosphere where it can happen. Therefore, I have come again. There is no responsible parent who should be tired of seeing their child. No. God wants to give us rest tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God wants to give us rest. That means you have a responsibility to search the areas of your life where you have not yet seen rest in experience we're going to pray two kinds of prayer before i begin to minister number one will be a prayer of thanksgiving to say lord thank you for giving me rest in this area now you know the definition of rest you have taken away all the forces that that disturb me in this area thank you for giving me marital rest thank you for giving me financial rest you see but Lord, I thank you because you are faithful to save to the uttermost. And that in, in administering your rest, you do it round about. So while thanking you for this one, I bring before you this one. Are we together now? Yes, sir. When you thank him for what he has done, you make petitions with faith. The Bible says in Mark chapter 11 and verse 44, it says, What things soever ye desire. Mark 11 and um 24 not 4 mark eleven twenty four. what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them what things soever ye desire the bible talked about naaman the captain of the syrian army when it had to do with war and the matters of war he had found rest he was a valiant man but the bible says he was leprous and now the time had come to do something about that leprosy. And do you know how he tackled the issue of leprosy? 
through the aid of the little slave girl, he isolated every other area and just, he just focused on that issue of leprosy until he was done with it. Thank God for the testimonies you've shared. Thank God for the manifest presence of God and results that you have seen in other areas. But for tonight, we are thanking him for what he's done. But then we are placing a demand by faith on his power to say, Lord, you can finish what you have started. Is someone in agreement with me? Father, you gave me land and I've built to Lintel level. Thank you for grace. But you are not only Alpha, you finish what you've started. So that this building will not be an indictment on your integrity. But that is not your best. Your best is you are a God of portions. You desire to give me my own space, Rehoboth, where I can say God has created my own space. So while I thank you for the rent, I am here tonight. Now that you have given me another opportunity. The only person who should be silent when we begin to pray is the person who is dead. But for as long as you are alive, my Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. Even in heaven you can come up here. You may be a man of God here. God has trusted you with tremendous levels of grace. You can thank him for that level of anointing. Thank him for that level of wisdom. But say, Lord, I have come again. Fresh fire. Fresh grace. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that even with the bracelet, I can still lift up my my the, the neck uh, you know whatever it is or whatever around my waist i can still give you thanks but lord i know i can do without it father thank you because i'm hearing on one ear i thank you for the privilege to even have one walking but lord you can make both whole and so i place a demand are we together and don't let the devil deceive you and say people are talking to god about serious issues and you are bringing this one is god complaining what things soever ye desire when ye pray and my bible says this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will that he heareth us he heareth us he's not an idol hallelujah my job prophetically tonight is as a midwife to help and guide you while you deliver because that baby must come out in the name of jesus christ that baby must come out. There is a natural process of delivery for a woman. And that is usually the best. But if for any reason there is an unusual delay, doctors have another alternative to force that baby to come out. But coming out, he must come out. Are we together? Holy, holy, Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Listen to me. I am a firm believer in Jesus Christ. And I am a firm believer in the miraculous. I truly believe in miracles. Because my life is one. Not just that I've seen one. He has made me one. I believe in miracles. 
What is a miracle? An occurrence that does not go through the normal sequence of the laws of life. You see, sponsored by the hand of God. An act of his mercy. An act of his might. An act of his love. This is a miracle service. It's not called a suggestion service. It's not called a counseling service. And whatsoever name Adam called it, that was the name thereof. Please rise up on your feet. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. Point number one is the prayer of thanksgiving. I like you to look at the areas where you have tasted a level of rest and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody is praying, Lord, you have helped me. Ebenezer, thus far, you have shown me mercy in this area. Thank you. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. Are you praying? You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I am the one. I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. One more time. Someone is praying. Father, thank you. Someone is praying. Lord, you have shown me mercy. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Lord, you gave me a house this year. Thank you. You restored my soul. You restored my health. Thank you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, he says. And forget not his benefits. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. Now you are going to cry. Father, the word declares that you are able to save even to the uttermost. I have come. The Bible says that he would not allow the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Now that you have thanked him, he says, enter his courts with thanksgiving. His gates with thanksgiving. His courts with praise. He says, come before him with singing. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't want you to keep quiet. You are going to mention the areas where you must find rest. Lord, I give you thanks for this and that area. But right now, I come before you trusting the God of all flesh. Someone pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Shalegebakatosadabrandegebalakatoshiata. Shalegebakatosadabrandegebalakatoshiata. Rest, 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 there remaineth a rest, 
marital rest, financial rest, fruitfulness rest, business rest, spiritual growth rest. Please pray. Every area you are yet to find rest, call upon the God who can give rest round about. Someone it may be in your business. Someone it may be in your ministry. Someone it may be in your family. Someone it may be in whatever area. Let us therefore labor to enter that rest. Please pray. Lord, grant me rest. Round about. You are standing in for someone. Here is the time to pray. Grant me rest. Grant me rest. That cancer, that diabetes, grant me rest. In the name of Jesus, grant me rest. Grant me rest. Hallelujah. We are still praying. I just sent to add one prayer point. Second Thessalonians 3.16 2 Thessalonians 3.16 I believe. One of the indices of rest is peace. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 It says, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. We are going to pray that by all means prayer. Lord, how you do it, I leave it to your creativity. But my heart is open. Visit me by all means. Change my story by all means. It is within your power to make great. It is within your power. Someone pray by all means. You are the Lord of peace. Grant me rest. Grant me peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. We are praying. Unfortunately, these two most important words, we don't seem to have the courage to use them for those who are alive. We only use them for those who are dead. We say rest in peace. Two important words that we should experience and enjoy in our lifetime. You don't have to wait until you are gone. You can experience rest and peace right now. You are not prophesying negatively. Declare it over yourself. Lord, rest and peace. You are giving it to me. In the name of Jesus. In my lifetime, I will find rest and find peace. Is someone praying? Outside, pray. All the overflows, pray. Online, pray. Grant me rest. Grant me peace. Rest round about. Rest round about. 
that you can bless me in all things my life becomes a testimony and a testament in the name of Jesus 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 listen you do not know there are ministers of the gospel here and they will tell you the greatest joy of any shepherd who truly loves his people is not his or her personal testimony is seeing God's people stand here to say look what the Lord has done look at the marvelous things turning my mourning to dancing my sorrow to joy so when I engage us to pray it is my desire as for me I'm prepared and God is prepared but it's to prepare our hearts to make sure that we receive maximally please don't be tired you are still going to pray one more time say Lord with my eyes and my hands I will see a performance over this issue whatever is the issue mention it that my answer will not remain in visions and dreams alone I'm tired of seeing it in visions and then it stops there I'm tired of having dreams and then it stops there tired of seeing the impartation in dreams and visions let it find expression tired of seeing the houses and the buildings in dreams and visions let it find expression that which is finished from the realm of the spirit let it be made manifest here and now the word became flesh and it dwelt among men and we beheld his glory tired of seeing the job in the realm of the spirit and then I wake up and only find out I was dreaming tired of seeing the favor in the realm of the spirit make it manifest now oh God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you be tired if I give you a few prayer points? Two or three. One of the ways we bring favor to our lives is through favor provoking prayers. I have taught you and you have seen it here. Believe me, I don't know how people live without the favor of God. It's impossible. You are going to pray. And say, Father, in this season, show me favor. Lift your voice and pray. Favor. End this drought in my life once and for all. Tired of going up financially and coming down. Tired of men liking me today. And then everybody leaving me alone tomorrow. Show me favor. Tired of empty handedness. Someone is praying. Cry to the God of all flesh. Whether you're outside, whether you're online, please pray. And Jabez, pray. Pray unto God. As a family, you are praying. As a ministry, you are praying. As a business, you are praying. Favor from heaven. I've taught you that the proof of favor is not just money. It's that men's hearts are loyal to you. Please pray. Oh. My favor has come. Oh, my favor has come. Oh, ah, my favor has come. Oh, my favor. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number two, speed. Listen, dominion over time is real dominion. No matter what you dominate, if you cannot dominate time, you are still lagging behind. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made five others to miss it out. They were prepared from the beginning and they were virgins, but they expected the bridegroom to come fast. Lord, whatever is bringing delay in my life, bring speed to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Bring speed to my destiny. Someone pray, someone pray, someone pray. Speed of accomplishment. Speed of establishment. Shalagata branda gata katosko to pradiata. Shakra teke balako to so pradigedia. Embra katosko to branda gata balako dia. Ebratusko to basalagateba. We are praying. We are praying. Satos kadi lakosi abanda kres. Ebrati ke balakota skoto branda gate balakatosi ata. Ekra katusa gete balatosi ata barando skotiya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still praying speed. Let me show you a scripture that will bless you. Genesis 27. Let's start from verse 18. Please hurry up. Give it to us. Genesis 27 verse 18. Do you know what happened here? This was Jacob and Esau. Isaac sent Esau. He said, go to the field and hunt and bring me meat. And then... The mother of Jacob and Esau told Jacob, he said, go behind the house and bring one. And he made it quickly. This is Jacob now, disguising as Esau. There's a statement I want you to see. And he came unto his father and said, Father, and he said, I am here. Who art thou, my son? 19. And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau. I have done according as thou bathest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me. Now watch this. 20. And Isaac said unto him, How is it that hast, thou hast found it so quickly? What did you do that may, You are not supposed to get this result under normal circumstances with this speed. His answer is our next prayer point. And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. Someone is going to pray, Lord, bring it to me. It is within your power. Bring it to me. One of the ways we experience speed is that God will bring it to you. Lord, bring it to me. Bring it to me. What I am looking for, it can look for me. You can bring it to me. You can bring the job to me by your mercy. How come you have found it so quickly? He says the Lord brought it to me. Some of you, as you are praying, you are already receiving supernatural answers. Bring it to me, O oh God. The destiny help us. I am tired of looking for them. Lord, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now please listen. We are going to minister. We will pray for the sick. But my focus tonight. Is these two areas. The area of favor. And the area of speed. Listen. It is impossible for you to not laugh when God honors you on this wise. That God brings favor 
The proof of favor is not money. You don't need favor to have money. Wisdom alone can sort that. But the loyalty of the hearts of men towards you, that is favor. When Jesus was born, the Magi, because of what was on him, they came all the way from the east. When men come, they don't come empty. The Bible says they came and met a baby, bringing him the gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When God was restoring Job in Job chapter 42, the 11th verse, his restoration happened because all his acquaintances and all those who had left him, the Bible says, the first thing that happened when God was restoring Job was that his acquaintances, all the people who had left him, the Bible says his brethren, all his sisters who left him. That means one of the ways that the devil attacks men is to remove men from your life. God can handpick men, but when there is a mass exodus of useful people, it's an attack. Did you hear what I said? One time he told the apostle, he said, don't be afraid. I have many men in this city. That means it's not only angels I have. I have many men who can protect and defend your cause. Favor. Favor. I have prayed this for you every day and I will continue to pray it. Because I have discerned and I have seen in my life and in this ministry, it is impossible to truly, sustainably do anything without favor. The number one reason why people fail more than demonic attack is the absence of favor. Because when you have the favor of God, you can rule even in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Now I'm going to pray for you. Listen, what does it mean to pray for people? It's more than just falling down. I want you to understand this. What your expectation should not just be to fall down and to stand up. You can fall down and stand up and honestly not receive anything. Are we together? That can just be the effect of the movement of God's power. In your physical body that you may not be able to stand. But when I say I am praying for you, the first thing is that your eyes should be on Jesus. Your faith should be alive. You are now listening for when your word comes. And you are receiving it by faith. And if and where the miracle should manifest now like healing, you are insisting that it happens. I'm going to pray for you because there are demon spirits. And I'm going to ask you to bring them out. For as long as I live, I will never stop casting out demons. For as long as I live, I will never stop trust standing in faith with Jesus to set the captives free. There are invisible spirits standing at the corridors of men's destinies and frustrating the purposes of God. Listen, when you see that certain battles are beyond the scope of humans, there is a spirit at work. But now, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Are you ready? I want to pray for you. I want you to bring them out here. We are going to be very fast because I want to take out time to pray for the sick. There are people who are under all kinds of yokes. Manipulations of darkness. Some of you are coming here for the first time. Some of you have come because you are completely confused. What is the name of what is going on with my life? Nothing seems to be working. I want to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus and at the count of three, I want you to shout that name Jesus. And that fire from heaven will fall upon anything that does not name the name of Christ and get it out of your life. Are you ready? Father, we give you all the glory. I'm telling you, I'm already sensing such power from heaven. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I decree and declare right now, everything that is not of God, Give way now. Give way now. Every altar, every orchestration of darkness, I command that it must leave. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. In the name of Jesus, please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, 
I'm seeing something that looks like a chain, but I'm seeing it on the heads of people being removed, not hands. On the heads, I decree and declare, as many who are victims of this, I bring you deliverance right now from the throne in the name of Jesus. Bring them out. I bring you deliverance right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. My God, I'm seeing fire coming on people. I'm seeing at least the number 44. This is inside and outside. And the Lord is bringing deliverance not only for you, but this is for your entire family. They have prayed. This is witchcraft that has tied down families. Some of you will be alright, but the power of God will still come on you. On behalf of your family, in the name of Jesus, I bring them out. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people. The moment you go to bed, encounters with dead people, those who have already gone, what, what fellowship has the living and the dead? In the name of, we are not talking of the spirits of just men made perfect. We are talking of demon spirits. I'm about to pray for you now. The power of God is coming upon you. That every association connecting you to the grave and connecting you to the dead, he must give up. Father, I decree and declare, let your power rest now and bring liberty. 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 In the name of Jesus. Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? The Lord is showing me the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the anointing of the Spirit go to Emo state. Emo. And, and the power of God is coming on people now that are connected to that state. This is, is, is a sign and a wonder how God does it. In the name of Jesus, anyone under any kind of yoke connected to ancestry from this region, be delivered right now. 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 Every time a miracle is about to happen to you, you will have a dream in the night. Either someone molesting you or something happens, and that is the end of it. Somebody who said, I will favor you, will turn against you. I decree and declare, by the decree of the waters, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, every altar sponsoring delay and sponsoring um, abortions of great dreams just when it's about to happen, I cause it right now. I cause it, bring them out. I cause it right now. Listen, many of you have heard the stories of people. They will tell you, I suddenly got a job that I applied for in 2017. It did not just happen. There are spirits that stop it. But when they are taken away upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, then holiness, then possessing of possessions. Alimara Supra Haskiada. Heradusia Casco di Balanda Subrahas. There is someone you are at the back. You are a man of God. I just saw fire come on you. You don't even know why ministry has not been working. The Lord is visiting you. I'm seeing at the back. There is such such anointing. That glory is just resting upon someone and breaking that yoke of delay in ministry. That people come and they go, they come and they go. There is no staying and there's no growing. In the name of Jesus, wherever that person is, may the power of God touch you right where you are. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know there is the spirit of poverty? Then there is the mindset of poverty. If the only thing you correct is the mindset, you will still be poor. There is the spirit of poverty. There is the mindset of poverty. Then there is the absence of value and productivity. All of these are factors that ultimately lead to poverty. You can find your place in terms of providing value. But if the spirit and the mindset is not corrected, you will still be poor. You can provide value and even upgrade your mind. But the limitation of intellect, it cannot cross beyond to the realm of the spirit and correct spiritual things. Are we together? The same way the spirit of poverty can be cast away, but the mindset of poverty can remain. You will still be poor. The mindset of poverty can go away, and the spirit of poverty can go away. But then if there is no value and productivity, you may, it may not amount to much. You will just have an epileptic financial life. Here you will learn the whole counsel of God. It is the value and productivity but then the transition that happens to you mentally. But ultimately, the king of Tyre, he sits in Tyre and Sidon himself. He lifted Jesus and took him into an exceeding high mountain. And said, showed him all the kingdoms and the glories. And he said, I will give you. This is not the issue of you are transformed. I will, it's a transaction we will do from the realm of the spirit. I want to rebuke that spirit. There is a real spirit of poverty. I have seen people who spent 10, 20 years in the U.S. and will return back when you see them in the village today, respectfully speaking. You will never believe that they've even traveled even to the, the state, the capital. It's a spirit. When you find out four or five graduates, all with PhD, and the least person, respectfully speaking, it's maybe some teacher somewhere earning 20,000 with PhD. This is more than the issue of value. There is a spirit. My assignment is to deal with spirits. Hear me. Anytime you see that you are not where you, use, where you should be, and from a physical standpoint, all that should be in place is in place. There is a spirit stopping you. Let me pray for someone. In a, see, many people, the power of God will come on so many people over this prayer. Father, I am praying that every territorial altar that has sponsored poverty, generational hardships, you are still going to shout that name, Jesus. I decree and declare at the shout and the blast of that name, Jesus, let the fire of God fall and deliver families. Are you ready now? One, two, three, shout, Jesus. I command that altar. Give way now. Bring them out. I cost that spirit. I cost that spirit. I cost that spirit. Tying down families. Tying down destinies. Be lifted in the name of Jesus. My God, miracles are happening here. Deliverances of all sorts. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. Bring them out if you can. Hallelujah. Who is Janet? I'm hearing a name, Janet. I want to pray for the sick. Janet. I can imagine that there are many people with that name, but the Lord is speaking, Janet. My dear, you are stepping into a new season of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands towards you. This is not only you, this is you and your husband. It's a season of reward that is coming. God is looking upon you with favor and with grace. And I declare may that grace rest upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are five or six people 
who will start running out. Please hold them and bring them out gently. <sighs> Lift up your heads. O ye gates. 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 Bring them out. I'm seeing something in the realm of the spirit. I made this statement because I just saw a gate. Very old gate. It's like it just blasted and it opened. That's why I, I was prophesying that. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Allah For some of these gates, they have been closed for centuries. They have been closed for decades. Like Jericho, nothing comes out and nothing comes in. But the God of vengeance is opening those gates right now. Please help them so that no one injures themselves. Janet, with Janet, I want to pray for you. The power of God is coming on one of you. Janet, I just saw something come out, like physically. Just, um, I, I almost didn't even know that. Just come out of one of you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that spirit. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. So if it stands, there is a cause. And if there is a cause, the remedy is the blood. Therefore, I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, every legal access, I use these people in front as a point of contact, every legal access that the devil has over any life and any destiny that is authorizing oppression by the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, I declare that legal access is broken now. Broken now. Broken now. Broken now. Open your mouth in one minute and declare every legal access that is authorizing oppression by the blood of Jesus, even the blood of the eternal covenant. I declare my release. I declare my release. I announce a jubilee by the spirit of grace. Faith brings me to my jubilee. And I declare, I announce a jubilee. Someone is praying. A financial jubilee. A health jubilee. Hallelujah. Who is Christopher? I'm hearing the name Christopher. We may not have all the time to just prophesy. Christopher, restoration is coming. Christopher. Ah, can you imagine? This man, that was his wife, Del, that was under the anointing. Christopher. Who sells phones? Phones like electronics, but I'm saying phone. You sell, you sell phone. Is there someone like that? You have like a phone shop. I want to pray for the person now. Please, if it's your issue, you had the testimony of that gentleman. Once there's a delay, protocol will naturally have to stop you because we have to hurry up. When you find that you sell phone, you deal with phone gadgets. Please let me have that person. I want to pray for him. Christopher, the Lord is bringing restoration. That's what I heard in my spirit. Restoration. Two of you, the power of God is coming upon you. A strange grace is coming upon you for restoration. The way God will restore things, it will surprise you. Everyone will receive, but two of you, the power of God is coming on you. In the name of Jesus, I declare it so. May that mantle rest upon your life. Let there be restoration, supernatural restoration. Where is that lady that gave that footballer, that my footballer lady, where is she? The lady who came to... As she was testifying, God had put it in my heart to pray. Is she here? Is she around? She's a footballer now. She should hurry up. You are a footballer. You should be able to...
your life is about to change. Do you believe in miracles? Hmm. Yes, sir. There is a kingmaker anointing. Listen, kingmakers don't become kings, but they enthrone and they dethrone. It is by privilege of grace. There is something that is happening here as I'm praying. You will hear testimonies of people like that thing they say, grass is it grass, grass to grace. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I place an anointing upon you. I'm seeing that the doors of Europe will open for you. Receive that grace. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I prayed for her, let me speak for, to, over everyone. Anyone called Mephibosheth, that you are in your lowly estate, by reason of certain disadvantages in your life, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that David sends for you. The season has come for your lifting. Oh, thou Mephibosheth, David has sent Ziba to look for you. I stand as a prophetic Ziba. In the name of Jesus, you are sent for by the Lion of the tribe of Judah, even the root of David. In the name of Jesus Christ, And David said, Is there any man of the house of Saul that he may dine with me? And Ziba went to Lodeba and brought Mephibosheth. And he made the sons of Ziba to plow the land for him. But as for him, he said, You will dine with me here for the rest of your days. God has visited your wife, Christopher. At least I know this one. This is not... It's your turn. Favor. God is going to be connecting you to people of strange influence. I release that grace right now upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That the gates of this city will open for you in a way that will surprise you. Let this happen even by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Why are they all here? This one at the back. That one with a nose mask. Phone, phone gadgets. Phone gadgets. Yes, Where? In Dutse. Dutse. Dutse shopping complex. Sir. Okay. You believe in the power of God? Yes, sir. Two months. Yes, sir. Two Amen. months Amen. from now. Amen. Please hear me. Take that grace. Two months from now, my God will turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. This is by the Spirit. I'm not the one doing it. It's as instructed that the Lord puts in my heart and I declare it in the name of Jesus and for all of you who have come out here for various reasons there is a man you are a lawyer what is God doing with legal people I'm seeing the Lord is bringing restoration this is a legal practitioner in the name of Jesus I don't know where that person is but you have lost money you have lost things in the name you don't have to come out please just except i ask you if not the time we may not be able to what do you do huh where i'm a lawyer i practice in abuja integrity chambers where integrity chambers how long has this been i've been into practice for the past 10 years do you believe in the power of god yes sir you've lost everything yes sir money yes sir. opportunities yes, sir. they defrauded you yes, sir. but now god wants to restore you amen do you believe this yes sir, i believe sir do you know you would think that because the power of god flows through me i should be used to this i'm standing in shock myself as i watch how god turns lives around believe me believe me my friend, in the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. Every legal practitioner here, you've not been rising, no clients, no open doors. Fire is coming on you now. I'm seeing someone, you are in the ushering department and you are a lawyer, you are a lady. Where is that person? Your doors are opening. Just take it. Don't worry. You don't have to. God is going to visit you. Legal practitioner. In the name of Jesus. 
please don't tell lies. Make sure. Are you, are you lawyers? Huh? Father, you have spoken in the name of Jesus. Let that grace rest upon you now. Let that grace rest upon you now. Let doors be opened for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, the one I started praying for, in Jesus' name I pray for you. Let there be restoration. Forget about everything you have lost. The God of heaven is able to restore. If he restored Job, may he restore you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Philips? Philips. Who is? May God bless you. You are all blessed in Jesus' name. I want to pray for the sick, but am I wasting your time? Philips, I'm hearing. Please, let's verify so that, you know, sometimes these people just run, whether they are the ones or not. They will come and they will say, by faith. We are people of faith, but let's just make sure that we don't tell lies. You can receive by faith. That gentleman, God wants to turn his life around. Philips. Take it easy. Take it easy, please. The ushers are trying. They are human beings who take it easy. If they are tired, they will leave you to fall down. You may enjoy yourself. Let's take it easy. What do you do, my friend? And I'm a teacher. Where? I have a cosmetic shop. And I'm a professional teacher. So I combine the both. Okay, I want to pray for you. Where are they coming out? You are Philip too? All of you? I will pray for you. The one with white, what are you doing? I'm a businessman. Okay, we'll pray. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I don't know what God is doing with ushers. There's one ushering person who will shout now under the anointing. The power of God. I don't know whether it's inside here, whether it's outside. I'm praying for... Every altar... In the name of Jesus, I curse it right now. Yeah. Hear me. Whatever will not give you rest, in the name of Jesus, may it be laid to rest now. Yeah. May, may it be laid to rest now. Yeah. For all of you, you came out here for various reasons. I stretch my hands towards you. May the power of God rest upon you and everything that has brought retrogression in your life, let it come to an end now. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. The gentleman under the anointing, he is blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please don't be embarrassed there. I'm seeing... One of them, I don't know, it's like you are up somewhere. You are a medical doctor. And then one I'm seeing in one of the overflows. These two, I know there are many medical doctors here. But I'm just walking as the Spirit of God is granting me grace. Because we are going to quickly pray for the sick. Medical doctor. I don't know if um, one of them I know for sure is in one of the overflows. And then... Is there someone like that? I want to speak over your life. God is changing your life. In one of the, not outside, one of the overflows. You're a medical doctor. And then someone within this place, like somewhere up the balcony, not here. You're a medical doctor. Is there someone like that? Please, when you find them, let me speak over their lives so that we'll bring this to an end. Now, I don't mean to embarrass you, but there's... The person I'm seeing is a lady. You made your hair. You didn't tie it. This is what I'm seeing. You're a lady. You didn't like you pack your hair like this. Is there someone like that? Medical doctor. See how many doctors we have here. That means we shouldn't be sick. Spiritually and medically. Hallelujah.
father I was going to say something just escaped my mind now in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God you, 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 you would imagine that these sincere people some of them please I'm not insulting you eh? I'm not insulting you but you can't imagine the things I'm seeing as I'm looking here these are sincere people who love the Lord attending to other people and yet for some of them there are all kinds of embargoes just holding them down in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare right now there's one of you there is such fire that is coming on you right now as I'm speaking in the name of Jesus release them now by the power of the Holy Spirit I declare freedom for you in the name of Jesus you have been applying to go abroad applying to go abroad applying to go abroad it's like this spirit will not let it happen you have not even gone past the first stage and it's not like you are lazy something just happens and it does not even work even before scholarships and now everything is over you were not even given in the name of jesus i declare by the power of the holy spirit a change of story comes for you now a change of story comes for you now a change of story comes for you now in the name of jesus hallelujah the lord is ministering to me to do something different please bring out your prayer request don't submit it. Just bring it out. You are going to pray holding it. It's a good thing to walk with the Holy Spirit and not just to be mechanical. Please bring out your prayer request. If you've not written, you may want to write it down. I'm not a prophet of doom. And usually I would not come to say this in the open but let's pray i'm seeing a major person in the judiciary go to be with the lord just like that and they say this person has gone i'm not a prophet of doom but and ordinarily it will not even profit me to say anything sometimes god just puts it in your heart and he has been insisting i've been struggling with it to say it but we have to pray. There are some things that the prayer now is to help the people so that they put their houses in order. But I'm seeing someone in the judiciary. You will hear this happen. May the Lord show the family mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ. And that they put their houses in order. But this is what God has revealed to me. Please bring your prayer requests. I want you to truly believe that the things that you have written will come to pass. Some of you, you may not have any personal need, but you are writing for the sake of others. Some of you are holding photos in one minute. Ordinarily, I would ask you to bring it here, but the Lord just began to put this in my spirit. I've not even prayed for the sick. And even if we pray and we don't have the time to take testimonies, that's fine. This is it's not some ritual we are people who are led of the spirit hallelujah but in one minute while holding your prayer request i want you to agree with god and say father everything that i've written in the name of jesus let it become my testimony someone is praying everything i have written everything i have written outside inside you're writing it for yourself those online you're connecting by faith in the name of Jesus. I have seen God answer prayers in remarkable ways. Please pray. It's an instruction that God is putting in my spirit. If you can mention the things you wrote, mention them by faith. To be anxious for nothing, the Bible says. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it says to let our requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. Let your requests be made known unto God. Hallelujah. Now, 
please hear me i'm going to give a very serious instruction and i want you to listen please listen if you are here and you've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb please listen you have been trusting god for the fruit of the womb we are going to pray during the program but immediately after the program please i want to meet with you so all those who are here number one be sure you are married and then number two make sure that um you are serious about what we are saying we are believers we are not idol worshippers so if you if you don't believe just go away but those you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb please after the service i want you to wait i will ask the protocol you can wait in front here i'll ask the protocol to lead you i want to have a word with you your salvation has come in the name of jesus believe me when i tell you your salvation has come in the name of jesus now while you are standing please you can pass your request to the last person ushers please let's collect it now let's collect it now who is Samuel, a baby? Samuel, a baby. Is there someone like that? A baby, oh. Huh? Your son? And so you stand now. Who else? Samuel, a baby. You too? Is my friend, but even though he's not a baby, this boy is... How old is he? Four. Ah, four. You're not a baby boy, you're my friend. Because you have smiled at me, I will pray for you. Eh? How are you? Are you my friend? Yes. Beautiful. Because you're my friend. Welfare. I don't know where you're going to find cake, but make sure this my little boy. This boy, give him something and bless him. Huh? In fact except it will create chaos if it will not create chaos and we can do it in the next one minute from one to ten bring all our children here <laughs> parents if you can do it orderly please don't carry anybody's child who is not your own this is a large house i'm warning now let's obey instructions obedience is better than sacrifice let's celebrate our children as they come this is koinonia future Is this how you are honoring them? Parents, if they are coming out, hold them. Anyone that cannot walk you, come with them. Jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red brown yellow black and white they are precious in his sight Jesus loves the little children of the world hallelujah children god bless you eh? just behave well don't give your parents headache we're about to pray for you huh some of you at this age you were in a shrine you were not even here. So glory to God that we have our children in the house of God. I know what I'm saying. Some of you at this age, there was an altar and all kinds of demonic things being done on you. It's just in my spirit to pray for these precious children. Don't belittle them. The person whose future you have already seen, you've seen it. But the one whose future you have not seen, only God knows. Remember, what you are learning as an adult is what they are learning as children. Please, if you are coming, come quickly. Parents, I'm seeing some other people come. We are all going to do it. We'll pray this prayer. Sorry, sorry. Help me. Please, just comfort the children. Soon we'll have a children's department. You see how this is children? There has to be a way of managing this. So, for those of you who are in children ministry, get ready. You will soon have work in the name of Jesus. Start, start thinking already. Start planning. How are we going to have the best child care system? 
Now, please stretch your hands wherever you are to these ones. And I want you to begin to speak over their lives from the depth of your heart. Pray like you are praying for your own biological child. Is someone praying? This is part of the miracle service. Please cry to the God of heaven. Don't worry if you are holding a child's picture, just lift it. You don't have to come. Just lift it where you are. Please pray. Children, pray to talk to Jesus. Father, we pray for our children. We pray for our children. We pray for our children. We pray for our children in the name of Jesus. These koinonia children will not be lost. Please, someone pray. They will not die before their time. In the name of Jesus, the hand of God is upon them. They represent the future of this ministry, the future of this vision. Lord, we love them, we honor them, and we pray that you will bless them. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Someone rebuke Satan. The Lord rebuke you over the life of these children. We separate them from the company of wicked and unreasonable men. We separate them from occultism, initiations of, of infants. In the name of Jesus, we declare they are free, free, free from it. And if there is any child here that is under any kind of occultic manipulation, witchcraft, wizardry, in the name of Jesus, we bring them deliverance now. We bring them deliverance now. We bring them deliverance now. I decree and declare, I join my faith with everyone here and every parent here, and we speak over our children. In the name of Jesus, prayer number one, none of them will die an infant. I say it again, none of them will die an infant. Number two, everything connected to ancestry, whether coming from the east, the west, the north, and the south, in the name of Jesus, we bring them deliverance now. Number three, academically, we place an anointing upon them. May they excel like Daniel. Number four, as touching the matters of God, may they have the encounters of Samuel, even as infants, in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I am praying that every parent here, who is alive seeing their children in the name of Jesus you will see them as adults you will see them as leaders you will see them as great people in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord bless you and the Lord increase you in Jesus name let's celebrate them as they go please I want you to lay your hands you are trusting God for a healing miracle lay your hands now Please, I want us to be very orderly with the children. Make sure that they go back to their parents or their loved ones. Please, let's, let's make sure that they go. Children can run around and play, but make sure that they go, especially for the, the very small ones. Let's make sure that they return back. Please lay your hands. I want to pray. Some of you, this is a major reason why you came here tonight. Because of our time, we may not, I'm not sure that we may have the time to take testimonies tonight because um, I, I don't want to stretch us too long. We can leave all the testimonies for the next week. But I want you to lay your hands there. Why do we pray for the sick? Because there is a relationship between sickness and death. There is a strong relationship between sickness and death. Now please, if you are here and you came with a sick person, you can stand in for them by faith. Or if you are following from a hospital, there are several hospitals that connect to the miracle services. They have their patients trusting God. And we've heard marvelous testimonies of miracles. Whether it is high blood pressure, whether it is hepatitis, HIV, whatever it is, just lay your hands. I want to pray for you right now. I have experienced the healing power of Jesus in my own life. So I know that he heals. I know that he, he heals. Just lay your hands there. No one, Jesus, there is no one. 
Darling, there is no one. Jesus, there is no one else like you. No one. Jesus, there is no one. Darling, there is no one. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you are great, you do miracles so great. There is a man you are not in here, but you are suffering from prostrate. He's been diagnosed already. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the power of God is coming upon you right now. The power of God is coming upon you right now. The Lord is showing me a woman, your left breast. There are multiple lumps there. Verify you've gone to the hospital. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God? I bring you life right now. Now I rebuke every spirit. I'm seeing a thermometer go up and down. And every time I see this, this prophetically signifies blood pressure. Whether high blood pressure, low blood pressure. In the name of Jesus, I am praying right now. For every and anyone who is here suffering from high blood pressure, low blood pressure in jesus name be healed now god is healing someone with the issue of blood this is a terrible thing sometimes you almost feel dizzy almost like you collapse in the name of jesus i declare please help them let there be healing for you now let there be healing for you now every blood condition blood condition hiv hepatitis in the name of jesus i speak over your life be healed now you can bring the request in the name of jesus christ shout a loud amen i'm seeing someone around i don't know if it's your armpit area or the side you have a growth something that looks like a boil that has come out is so discomforting and is painful in the name of jesus i am praying for you may the power of god rest upon you rest upon you rest upon you in the name of jesus christ eye conditions you're already having cataract glaucoma in the name of jesus or any kind of eye condition you're already seeing things that are not there because of severe, severe pains, water coming out of your eyes, I decree and declare, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. There's someone you have from your lumbar vertebra down and then another person you have severe pain just around your back here. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where that person is. Who is that? What's that you are lifting? A corset? Are you the one holding it? Do you believe in miracles? Lift it and come. You are healed. Come. Lift it up. Is it for you? How long? 20... What couldn't you do? I, I couldn't bend. Look I, at me. You, brought, you came here with this. Yes, sir. All the way from Joss. All the way from Joss. Yes, sir. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, bend. Check yourself. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at, look at. He's checking himself. This 
woman too? Who is this? Back pain. Back pain. Yes. For how long, ma? For more than 11 years. More than 11 years? Yes, even last, last month I received injection 242. 242. Yes, and I'm still receiving. See here, yeah, for back. And Madam. L4, L5. And then down to my leg, here, yeah, knee. What's um, now? We didn't plan to take testimonies, but you see, God, God knows that some people need this for their faith. Huh? Madam, 200 and... 243, yes, until I lost some. Because every day they will give me four, yes? Yeah? Then my two hands, they can still see the sign of the... My dear, that's all, it's, it's all right, madam. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. My dear, Usher, place your hand on her back. Father, this is a miracle service. In the name of Jesus, 242 injections. This is, this is demonic. This is not a medical condition. Father, let Jesus be glorified tonight. I decree and declare, be healed now. Yeah. Madam, look at me. Bend over slowly. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Stand up. Bend again. Bend again. Any pain. Bend again. Look at what is happening to her. Your legs. In the name of Jesus. Stand up. Look at me. Lift your leg. No, no, no. Watch what I'm doing. Watch what I'm doing. Do it. Take it easy. Watch what I'm doing. Are you seeing what Jesus is doing to this woman? Now walk, madam. Walk. Try to walk. Just twist while you are walking. Any pain? Look at what is happening to her. My goodness. What is happening to you, madam? Look at Ah, look at this. Look at this. I'm still seeing... God bless you, madam. I'm still seeing somebody. Please forgive me. But this, there is an anointing for bone conditions to heal people. There are some of you who came with crutches, whether outside or where. Please. I want you to, I, I, my conscience, my heart, I will not be able to sleep knowing that the power of God for this miracle has come. Whether I, I know somebody was healed outside, I know there are a number of people. Lift it now and walk. Lift it now and walk while we pray. In the name of Jesus, take it easy. We're not, we're not stage managing or faking anything yet. This is the power of God walking through people. Walking through people. Please, when you find a miracle, let us know. And then if we can have one or two of them. But let me finish the prayer. Um, there's someone, it looks like something is stuck around your throat. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am praying for you right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Lord is showing me someone, there is a swelling. Like this is a thyroid. You know, this, um, this thing that swells the throat. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but the power of God is coming upon that person right now. Don't tell lies. Make sure you really have such a situation. Who is the person? We are praying right now. Oh, I can see it. Look at all the wonderful destinies that the devil wants to trap with this demonic thing. Your own is an attack, eh? Lady number two. I cast that spirit out now. In the name of Jesus. Father, for your name and for your glory, this demonic thing, I don't care what it is and where it came from, but in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Be healed now. Amen. Be healed now. Amen. That the, the spirit behind it is caused right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There will be complete healing. Complete healing for you. 
in Jesus name I'm still praying for the sick I remember calling out Samuel a baby before we spoke about the children I didn't get to pray is there a baby called Samuel maybe I'll just pray we may not have time for all of them to come out but there is the Lord is asking me to rebuke an attack over a Samuel who is a baby some of my dear people leaders here have their children called Samuel and any other person here connected in the name of Jesus there's a miracle that has happened there look at this let's celebrate Jesus are you seeing what the Lord is doing the lady is even surprised herself Koinonia are you celebrating Jesus look at this you are the covenant keeping God. You are Yahweh. My dear, you came with this. What happened to you? Well, you were praying, so I. No, what happened before now? How long? For like about a week or two now. Oh, okay, it's just something that happened recently. Yes. Place your hand on your neck. In the name of Jesus, we do not trivialize this miracle. This is the Lord's doing. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, my dear. Any pain? Any pain? Any pain? Look at this. In the name of Jesus, perfection for you even by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ perfection for you in the name of jesus christ i don't know but again the spirit of god is taking me outside there's someone i don't know what miracle has happened to you outside that's not the overflows now outside in the name of jesus christ i i, I don't know what miracle that is but by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I think this is something that has to do with your legs. From what I'm seeing. In Jesus name. I am praying for you. Let life, let strength, let vitality rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone you have been suffering severely from breathing problems. You don't have asthma. Yet it acts as though it's asthma. You know, severe breathing problems. Breathing problems. I'm praying for the sick. Is there someone like that? The Lord wants to set you free right now. How long has this been? Help a gentleman and a lady who will shout under the anointing now. One day I will take the time to explain to you why these things happen. So that you can understand. Because sometimes when we don't have an understanding... It just looks like these are just some. What's that? Please, they should take it easy. Listen, let me teach you something. In administering miracles, don't just get excited to show that the man of God is anointed or the power of God is in the place that you punish and frustrate the people who are. Remember, everything we do is by love. So even when the people believe and if they start moving, you guide them as they are releasing their faith and the miracle now manifests. That is when you can bring them up to testify. Don't, don't try to embarrass them and put them, you know, under pressure. Either because you've lifted their wheelchairs or you've lifted their crutches. We are not pretending this. When a miracle happens, a miracle has happened. It's as simple as that. Are we together now?
breathing problems. Please help them. Three of you, the power of God is coming on you now. It's the spirit of death. After that, I can pray for the rest. This one is the spirit of death. It's just the instruction God is giving me. Three of you, there is an anointing that is coming. That one is, is the manifestation of the spirit of death. You must let them go. Oh, death, where is your sting? And oh, grave, where is your victory? In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Now I pray for you. Every wicked oppression affecting you, affecting your breathing, whether in the night or in the day, connected to any medical condition, be healed now. I use this once as a point of contact to pray for everyone. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Lay your hands on your chest. I'm seeing something leaving you. This is a demonic thing. In the name of Jesus, it has been there for a long time. But now you must go. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. In Jesus' name, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, whether I mention your case or not, I decree and declare, outside all the overflows, inside following online, every situation that you've had, there's someone God is visiting you, you may not come out, you have a baby that is not growing. I don't know what the medical condition is, but your baby is not growing. And this is a very demonic thing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, wherever that parent or that baby is, I stretch my hands and I declare life and healing now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. One lady is going to shout under the anointing. All I will tell you is that a miracle is happening to your womb. That's what is happening to you. I don't know who that person is, but the Holy Spirit just ministered. The power of God is coming on you. A miracle is happening. Your womb. Your womb. It is something that medically cannot be corrected. But the Lord is visiting you now. It is something that medically cannot be corrected. But the power of God is resting upon you now. My God, look how many people outside. Those outside, lift your hands. I have to pray for you. The camera has shown me those outside. I'm praying for everyone. But I want to speak over those outside. Those outside, whether you are by the roadside, whether wherever it is, I want you to stand, I want to pray for you. We pray and trust that God will grant us grace soon to have our own facility in Jesus' name. Are you in agreement with me? You can see that those who are within the main auditorium are a very minute fraction there are so many people, all the overflows, following online, thousands of people outside. Those outside were agreeing with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that represents shame and reproach, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare, let it be broken from off your life now. Let it be broken from off your life now. Now, those outside, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. The power of God is going to come on some of you, and that will be my ministration for you, and then we'll just pray and do the altar call and wrap up. Those outside, Father, in the name of Jesus, even as you have put it in my heart, for all the thousands of people outside who have stood in faith, in the name of Jesus, trusting you to visit them, I decree and declare, Lord, by that shout, let there be an avalanche of your glory, your deliverance, your power upon every one of them. Are you ready now, those outside? Just the people outside. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I decree and declare, everything that is not of God, let it give way right now. I release you into the prophetic blessing of the Lord. 
I decree it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Supernatural miracles over your life. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural miracles over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands over the request. I know you prayed for them. But please stretch your hands. Stretch your hands over the request. Stretch your hands over the request. Thank you. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bow my knees even over these requests. There are people trusting God for financial miracles. There are people trusting God for change of stories. Trusting God for the salvation of their loved ones. Lord, they have brought this as an act of faith. I stand by the privilege of priesthood and I declare over this request, may they be answered by fire. May they be answered by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every human agent who must walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit to make for answers to this request, I compel their ministry over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that even from tonight, let there be a harvest of supernatural results. A harvest of supernatural answers. A harvest of supernatural testimonies. Because you believe, I declare that you receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as I would always pray, these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please lift your hands and receive this prophetic blessing. Every door that has been closed over your life and destiny. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. May that door be open now. May that door be open now. Number two. Every human vessel who has proposed to help you, but for some reason they've not been able to attend to you, this week coming, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you mercy that you receive their help. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. Everyone trusting God for a job here. You've heard the testimonies. I declare yet again, may my God surprise you. Every business here, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree and declare that the Lord God of heaven will cause you to excel. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray... I know that from an economic standpoint, it looks like times are very difficult. But I want to declare, even as you have prayed, may the grace for exemption, in the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you. But please hear me. No one here under the sound of my voice will become a victim of any kidnapping. As you go by road, as you go by sea, as you go by air, you are supernaturally protected. In the name of Jesus. And every orchestration of darkness against anyone here, you are delivered now. Those seeking God for promotion, I declare, let it be yours. Those seeking God for restoration in families. Let there be that grace upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray as always for your spiritual life. This is the highest and the noblest index to measure your success. I decree and declare fire like never before upon your prayer life. Fire like never before upon your word life. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Please hear me. If you came here facing any circle of disappointment, any circle of disappointment, I'm declaring to you this night it comes to a permanent end. Anything that has left you that should not have left by the power of the prophetic, we call it back to your life. Yeah. Hear me. Some of you, it's not like you are doing bad, but sincerely, you've not done anything extraordinary for a long time. It's, you can't say you are not doing, maybe you are doing poorly, but you can't also say you are excelling. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter. May that ever brighter grace rest on you. That ever brighter grace rest on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I just, I didn't even notice. I'm just spotting Choma Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, God bless you. My worship team people, make sure... After Choma Jesus, please let me plead. After the grace, you people will wait, she will pray and bless you. This woman you see, this is this is fifty years. Am I right on that? Yes. Fifty. Serving the purposes of God. What a lovely woman. Early uh, I think I don't know what month it was. I was with her in Oweri. It was such a beautiful, beautiful meeting. So, my dear people, there is grace for you to receive after the grace. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You have celebrated me. You have honored me. You have seen what God has done in and through my life. I want to pray a prayer for no, you don't have to kneel or did, but please. This thing called grace for visibility is not you can't manipulate it. It's not about social media. If the grace is not on you, if you like beg people to see you, they will say we are busy. I decree and declare, whatever has hidden you, so that your glory will not be seen, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in this season, find supernatural visibility. From America, to Europe, to Asia, to Africa, even in Nigeria, visibility for your ministry, visibility for your family, visibility for your business, Visibility for your products. Visibility for your business outfit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone here who has the call of God upon his life. I declare by reason of your encounter here. You will not fail. Help them. You will not fail. Men, women, pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, missionaries, receive the engracing for a new season. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your finances. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, you shall not beg. You shall not beg. Step into the overflow. By the anointing of the Spirit, you will soak the breast of kings. And in their glory you will boast yourself. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will multiply you. You will not be small. He will glorify you. You will not be few. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last prayer point. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God... Even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows. I want to pray for you. Honor is a grace. You've heard me say, you can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred upon another. I pray for you. By the privilege of this that we have received, in the name of Jesus, we have received it from God. We have received it through the Father's. We have received it to them that sell. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the living God, may this mantle rest upon you. Anywhere you have been despised, may that grace bail you out. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the glory. Wave your hands to Jesus from left to right and tell him thank you. Lord, we thank you for tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to make the altar call and then we're done. There are people here, thank you, you've been standing for long. Thank you for your patience. You may sit for a minute or two. There are people here who need to hand over their lives to Jesus. Please, let's minimize movement so that you allow those who are coming to come. There are people who are saying, Apostle, I have seen the power of God. I have seen the hand of God, but I sincerely need Jesus in my life even right now. I know that you may see people moving up and down. But please, I'd like you to focus. This call is for your destiny. Two in one. There are those who are saying, I need to make this decision afresh. And there are those who are saying, I need to rededicate my life to Jesus. You belong to any of these categories. We have one minute for you. Very boldly and without shame, with gallancy, leave your seat and come as we appreciate you. Let's honor them as they come. Let's honor them as they come. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? From the main auditorium, the balcony, all the overflows outside, following online, come to Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they come. I'm counting one to five and then we pray. One, two. If you're coming, please run. Please clear the way for them so that they make it. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved. I'm not exactly bad, but I'm not saved. Come, God bless you. Join them very quickly so that you can have what the Bible calls or what we call the assurance of salvation. Four, young and old, please come. Come to Jesus. He's able to give you a new beginning. And finally, five, you're coming, please rush. Apostle, I'm still thinking about it. Do I come? I want to come, but I'm ashamed of my friends. I'm ashamed of those who I came with. Please leave them and come. This is a very personal decision. Amen. Thank you. Please, may I request, thank you for coming. May I request that you lift your hands high above your head as a sign of surrender. All the overflows, those who have come out, please, the same. And then following online, maybe in your home, anywhere, I'd like you to just lift your hands. Say after me very loud and clear, say, Lord Jesus. One more time, please say, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died and rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I make Jesus Savior of my soul. And I declare that Jesus is my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I'm born again in Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Father, for these ones. You have brought them even by your spirit. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. In the name of Jesus, based on your declaration, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that it is a new beginning for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that the life of God would find visible expression in your life. I commend you to the word of his grace. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded in righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for this gentleman. I rebuke that spirit. You heard his confession. Let him go now. In the name of Jesus, release him by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much for this decision. May I please request that you follow the counselors to my right, which is your left. Let's honor them as they go. Celebrate them. Thank you very, very, very much. Hallelujah. Please keep clapping until they go. God bless you. Hallelujah. 
Thank you very much. Again, let me, we're stepping into deeper series of teachings that will build us. The weeks that follow would be times of intense prayer, times of learning at a higher level. God is lifting us line upon line, precept upon precept. Like I said yesterday, may I please encourage you to, number one, ensure that um, you get these teachings as far as possible. This is not some marketing of a man of God's ministry. Uh, the business that we're in is, is greater and more serious than that. We're talking about destinies and lives that sometimes may be at the mercy of one message for their transformation. And then do remember that our corporate publicity is your our corporate publicity is your responsibility also, being part of this family and this fold. Ensure that you do not just come to church alone, but do well to come with someone. And we'll keep doing our best to make sure that whether you sit outside any of the overflows, inside, or you connect online, that you have the best of the Koinonia experience. And we trust that God is going to grant us grace in Jesus' name. A quick announcement uh, to all of the workers, please. Um, watch for the messages that will be sent to you from your heads of department um, for when we'll have the workers' meeting, workers' retreat. So please do well. And then I hope that by next week um, we'll begin to announce when we'll be having the practicum for our School of Ministry students. Many of you, um, you have not experienced our School of Ministry students, and so we'll be having... The practicum will give them room to just come and tell us what this, was, this would be about. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. One more time, we honor Pastor Godwin, his left, and then we honor uh, Pastor Mrs. Bimbo. God bless you, ma. Truly, take our love and blessings to Apostle Goodheart. May the Lord bless you. And for every man and woman of God here, may the Lord bless you and lift you in Jesus' name. I completely forgot to introduce a dear man of God who came with um, Pastor Sam, Pastor Ishaya, and his wife, Laura. God bless you. Thank you so very much. All the way from Gombe. The Lord bless and honor you in Jesus' name. Please, let's rise. Please do remember the case that I called. Maybe ushers will walk with them, and then um, we'll just have a word with them. Please stand. Have you been blessed tonight? The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I forgot to add this. Please let me encourage you. Um, I know that we allowed for limited people yesterday, but let me encourage you. Please go to Koinonia Global and listen to the birthday broadcast yesterday. It's a very important message that will be most edifying for your spirit man. Praise the name of the Lord. It's just about an hour, 30 minutes or max 50 minutes. Settle to listen to it and then the Lord will bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. Your week beginning, I decree and declare that you will carry the presence of God and you will come back with strange results. You are a victor. You remain a victor in the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much and see you on Sunday.